All right, so we just got home from work, and me and the come here, come here, pup. Me and the doggo, we're gonna go out in the woods, do a little bit of work. I know you guys like to make fun of my turf tires from time to time, but I did some modifications to the 755 that I think will give me a little bit more traction in the muddy conditions. Let's see what we're talking about. You see, so what I did is I turned it into a D4G cat. I think uh, Mike doesn't run turf tracks, so I think we'll be okay. Look, it's too muddy to mess with the road, but we just got the dozer up here, and when you got a dozer, you're gonna doze, you know what I mean? Post step one, like always, is see if we can get it started. Of course, gotta turn the master on. You can strap your camera bag in so you don't lose it. Isn't that handy? That is so handy. Look at that. Now I can't lose my camera back. I'd tell you what, Caterpillar, they think everything. Battery's dead though. Isn't that a bummer? Huh. All right. It's been like seven days since I came out here and tried this the other day, but um, got a jump pack with me today. We've got a, uh, oops, 12 volt system. Let's see if we can get this jump pack hooked up. Let's see if we can get her going. So check this out. This jump pack is an option of 12 or 24 volts. It just matters where you hook this fella in right here. Like I said, this is 12 volt. There we go. Let's see what happens. Of course, it's going to help to turn the master back on. I don't know why I turned it off. It's dead, but I guess habit. Let's see what we get. Like I said, it's been a while since I made that first part of this video. I feel like I made a good turf tire joke, but I can't remember, so just in case, you know, turf tires. All right. Hey, look at that. That's a good start. Parking brakes on. Let's give it just a minute. Just a little bit, I'm gonna run to the house. I gotta switch out some SD cards because I just got a warning that I'm getting low on storage. We will put the drone in the air somewhere and get you an aerial shot of what we're doing. We'll get to going. All right, so there you can see the pile of crap left over from the fire from this video. If you haven't seen that video, you might want to watch it first. This might make a little bit more sense. You can pan around, you can kind of see what we're working with. It's just a little bit of a mess here that we've got from all the other cleanup stuff we've been doing. So we're just gonna try to take this dozer and get this area in ship shape. Look, there goes the doggo, running free in the woods. So, one downfall to drone footage is it doesn't necessarily have the sound of equipment, but I did just order a second SD card, which means I can record sound when I'm on the dozer and then overlay it into the drone shot so you'll actually get the sound of the dozer into the drone shot. In fact, I actually try that later in this video. So. Little improvements come to the channel over time. Anywho, we're going to get started on this cleanup. Hope you guys enjoy it. So we're going to start right here at this pile. You see all the sticks and stumps. We're going to try not to get them in the radiator there. We're going to take this nice and slow and just kind of pick it apart.
so full disclosure, I don't run a dozer very often. In fact, when I say run a dozer, I mean typically the only thing I ever do with this dozer is on the trailer and off the trailer. So if it looks like I'm running slow, I definitely am. I'm just kind of trying to figure out some tips and tricks and some techniques and see how it operates. Half a run of a dozer, no, probably even more of that. More than run a dozer is just knowing what the heck to do with the material in an efficient way. What I'm doing right now ends up biting me in the butt later. Hindsight, I shouldn't have pushed so far down the hill. I'm just trying to get the stumps and big logs kind of picked out in a general shape of it. And then all the stumps and logs are going across this area over to a big ditch. For whatever reason, I decided to push all these stumps into the trees on the bottom. And like I said, that bites me in the butt later. Stay tuned. You guys will see what I'm talking about. So now that we kind of got that picked out, we're going to start pushing everything over towards this ditch. Ditch is kind of over in that general area. Let me tell you how I messed up. So now that I got all those stumps kind of picked out of that pile and the bigger logs picked out of that pile, when I did that, I pushed them downhill, which means to get them over to where I want to bury them permanently in that ditch, I got to push them back uphill across that plane. And anybody that's ever ran dozers will tell you that it's a lot easier to push across the plane than it is uphill or upgrade. Also, I've got these stumps crammed up against these trees down here, which makes it even that much more difficult on myself to try to get them where I want them. So you'll see what I mean. There's a couple times I struggle, but hey, you live and you learn. And uh, like I said, this is kind of the first time I've used this other than taking it on and off a trailer. And we'll just go chalk it up to a learning experience. So you remember we started there and I've time-lapsed you. I've time-lapsed you a few different spots, kind of working our way across little by little. But I wanted to take you off the time-lapse because we're getting ready to push. Uh, so this has all the biggest stuff that didn't burn all this, the, probably most of the stumps and some of the bigger logs you can see. And we're gonna shove all that down into this hole. It's a pretty good sized ditch. Um, you can see there's already some stumps and concrete and stuff down in there. 
Well, that's probably 15, 20 foot deep or so. So we're going to uh, try to thread the needle between those two trees and start getting this stuff pushed down in between there. And I thought that might be kind of cool shots. So uh, I took you off time lapse. We'll get the magnet, the magnetic mount out and we may set the GoPro up on that side too. Who knows, maybe even the drone. Well, let's see what happens. So we pretty much got all the big stuff shoved down that ditch where I want it. I'll take uh, the 304 or the 120 and kind of dress that ditch up in the future a little bit. But for now, it's just perfect. So we're going to kind of fly over so you can see what we ended up with. A lot better looking than what we started. So now, pan over to the left. We're going to do a little bit of work on where the road's going to go there because I'm just kind of curious how it's going to fit in there.
like I said earlier, I'm just kind of trying to get the feel right now of where this road's going to come around this corner so I know uh, that area we just cleaned up, how I can blend it into this corner and how that's all going to look. And to be honest, things were kind of going well for me at this point, and I really just hated to get off the seat, so I left you up in that ladder maybe a little longer than I should have. But hey, it ended up in a pretty cool time lapse, and I'm pretty happy with it. Well, yeah, I kind of left you up there longer than I anticipated, but once you get in the seat, you just don't want to get out, I'm telling you. Hopefully you can kind of see what I was trying to do. I'm not trying to build the actual road today. I'm just trying to get a kind of general shape, see how it's going to lay and play into that bank because I want to know where I need this to end up because I'd like to get this pretty much finished up today. So hopefully you can kind of tell from here where the road's going to go. Gives me a good enough idea. Now I can see where all that needs to finish up at. So we'll get you on the magnetic mount, maybe the spike mount maybe and we'll get all this polished up and we're gonna call it a day All right, guys, so this is what we ended up with. You can see kind of the scarring from the fire right there. That's where the fire was sitting. This isn't ever going to be a yard or anything like that. It's just going to go back to being woods. You know, I may take the bush hog down every now and then, just keep the briars and underbrush under control until the uh, new hardwoods coming up develop enough of a canopy to keep it under control by themselves. Taking a little lap around the dozer here. You can see general idea of where the road's going to go. We're going to do some more work to that soon. That's the direction we came from. This right here is the ditch where we buried all the uh, stumps and trash at. There's a better shot of what that road's going to look like coming around that one tree. I really like trees. I, I genuinely do, and I try to save as many as possible. Just This is just kind of a mess, so we had to take out what we took out. Me and the doggo hanging out. That is going to be the next video, heading back into the woods. That's the next video, so stay tuned for that. We're going to pan down here, and you get a better look at that scarring on the ground. You can see where that fire was at. Right there, you can see where the clay was all baked up and the, the black spots from the leftover ashes and stuff like that. I'm going to get you lined up here and then we're going to blow through these trees and give you a quick shot of the river. I don't have any barge footage for you this time, sorry about that, but I'll definitely have some for the next video. Thanks for watching guys, as always, I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the comments. Welcome to all the new subscribers, we've got a lot coming to the channel. And to all the subscribers that have been with me, I appreciate you guys tagging along this long. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.